I'm doing a swim bait trace, a light swim bait trace once again. Um, it's just an alternative version to the original one, which you can uh, preview in our previous episodes, which was done with nylon coated wire. I'm going to be doing this one with our tooth proof wire and it's a plaiting process. It's a lot more difficult to do, but the results are a lot better as far as swim baiting goes. So on this swim baiting one, what we're going to be using, and again, like I said, it's a small one, so it's going to be about two and a half meters in length, maybe three meters. What we're using is our 13O um, tuna suis. Sorry, our ringed suis. Our ringed suis, 13O. Okay. Number two power swivels, and they're rated to 133 kilos, these power swivels. So they're more than strong enough. They are very small, but they are extremely strong. Number eight, um, toothproof wire. And I use it a lot. We're going to triple it, so it's very difficult to do. I've got a little tool that I've made up that we actually use for it. Basically, all it consists of is a little... Um, I can say circle on a bar that we can rotate. You can make them at home, they're very easy to do. You don't have to have one that's as, as uh, sophisticated as this one. You can just take a normal piece of wire with a little bend on it, bend it in basically a Z shape like this, and as long as it turns, you can use it. It works very well. I'm using the thick Kingfisher latex cotton. Sorry about that. It's the thick. Kingfish latex cotton and I'll explain to you why as we're going along um, UV not sense you can use super glue it doesn't really matter I'm just going to use this because that's what I've got at the moment obviously the loons uh, light that we use and side cutter and pair of pliers ringed soy I use two of them a 30 nose uh, the thick Kingfisher latex cotton. Let's pull a bit of it out. Easiest way to do it is just to double it. I like to use it back to back. I just find that the hookup rate is a lot better on edible fish. Because it's a lightweight trace, it will be fish that I'm swimming from one to five kilos. Um, anything from shad, bonefish, little kingies, stuff like that. And how we do it, we line up the eyes, pinch the latex cotton basically in your fingers, and you just wrap it around the shank of the hook. And you just carry on going. I don't like to go anywhere past the actual point when I'm actually doing this. There's no need to do it more than that. The higher up you go, just the more stable or the stronger the actual hook um, connection basically becomes between the two hooks there we go that should be enough double it and how we do that is just basically take the cotton go around finish around finish around finish and around finish pull tight done so that's basically what we are trying to achieve with the latex cotton it does move, it is flexible, but the minute you put the super glue on it, um, it will go tight, uh, it will lock in place. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put on my, my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. UV not sense. So, all we're doing, just adding a bit of UV not sense here or super glue. There we go. Take your finger and you just rub it into where we've gone. And the reason I like to use it is it actually goes translucent on the la latex cotton once it's actually rubbed in. Okay, so that's what it looks like before I put the actual light on it. And this is a UV light. You can walk out into the sunshine that we have today and it will dry almost instantly 30 seconds and it will be done all we do is we're just putting the blue light on the UV glue 
that should be enough there we do the other side and we just bake it and that I think should be enough yeah you can feel it's dry to the touch so that is done and I'm very happy with that I'm just gonna get one of my helpers to come along here and help me His name's Mike Dyer and I'm just gonna grab the boy and the best way to do this is uh -oh. to give him the one side and I'm gonna stand on the other side and we're just gonna triple this wire okay basically Mike yeah. Dyer's got the tag in there and I'm just gonna walk all the way back just unraveling the wire Nine meters of wire, basically we're going to end up with a three meter trace. And basically what you're going to do is just work it carefully with your fingers like that. The wire can be a bit unruly, so you just want to work it nicely. And we're going to match up the point with where we've bent it here. Just going to put a little bend in the wire, just like that. Now we use our wire cutters, just cut on that, just like that. And that way we've basically got three even lengths of wire. Now we're going to go back over there. I'm just going to tie the hook on and then we're going to come back here and show you how to do the plaiting. And we basically now measured out that nine meters of wire, split it into three exact same length pieces. And that's basically what we've done. Now to tie the knot, it's a very um, easy knot and why it works so well is that the wire actually pulls around the eye of the hook. That's where all the pressure is going to be with this particular knot. Okay, so let's go through it. And give yourself a generous piece to work with. Um, about 15 centimeters, 20 centimeters of wire. Okay, the first thing that I do is I kink the back part like that. Okay, around the eye. Take this one and you're basically wrapping it tight as you can one and a half times around so i've gone through around and then i come in the opposite side of that eye so where the wire comes out is where i'm basically going through now i'm trying to do it this way so i can actually see what i'm doing there we go okay so basically the three pieces are coming through and we pull as tightly as we can against it. So I'm squeezing it with these two fingers, holding it tight, grabbing my pliers, pulling as tight as I can on each strand. Once you've pulled it as tight as you can, you bend it back. Okay, so if you can see that, crisscrosses, and then it's come back on itself okay what we then do is take the actual three strands that you got and you kink it back almost at a 90 degree angle can you see that 90 degree angle to this wire over here and all I'm gonna do is just keep on rolling it once twice three and if you can see how the three strands are sitting next to each other, you must try and get them to seat evenly. If you don't, you end up with problems in the actual knot. So we just carry on going. Okay, you see here? I'm starting to get a little bit of a kink in that one wire over there and I've done it seven times already around so all I'm going to do is look for which wire that is and that wire would be this one over yeah okay is that wire there now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to break it off and to break it off you bend the wire back at 90 degrees you see I've just bent it back at 90 degrees and then you work anti-clockwise so you basically go anti-clockwise once twice three times and you'll find that little wire breaks off 
perfectly, there's no burr, there's no anything there left behind. And we just carry on going. Now I've got two pieces now. And we carry on going. Two, three, four, five, six times. And I find the next one, which will be that one over there. Bend it off at 90 degrees. Again, there we go, 90 degrees, and I'm gonna go anti-clockwise. There we go. So now I'm left with one strand. I'm gonna go around six times. One, two, three, four, five, six times. Now I'm gonna bend it off again, 90 degrees. There's the 90 degree bend, and we just basically go back on itself. Okay. Okay, so basically, as you can see, there's the wire twisted all the way up and along. So now we've got three strands of wire coming off. What you must do is try and take out all the twists in it. So as you can see, there's a whole lot of twists over here. And you just put your nail in and you just run it all out. Once you've done that, I'm going to get Mike Dyer to help me with my little machine here. And we're basically going to twist the wire, and it's very simple to do. I'm going to get him to do that now. I've got Mike Dyer here and my little tool. Um, we take the wire and we've basically opened it. We're going to put the entrance through that part there. Now what I do is I keep one in the middle and one on either side. It's the easiest way of doing it. It stops the wire from catching on things and twisting up and creating big knots. And how it works, Mike, just go slowly. The very important part is to keep your fingers the same distance apart as you're actually doing it. Okay. And you watch the wire at the bottom, how it's actually twisting up there. And have a look here. You can see how quickly the wire is actually twisting with this tool. As long as you keep the wire at the same distance apart, and that's the important part there. That's the important part. You see this here? This is what you don't want to have happened. You pull them out, you pull them out, and they start coming apart. Okay, there we go. There's the wire, plated. Three number eight wire, all plated. Now, the, what makes it so good is it goes in between the shark's teeth, and they don't have anything, any resistance on it when it actually goes, because this wire is very very smooth as it runs through the teeth of the actual shark and they don't get a, a gap to actually bite you off or move it around and that and of course this twists nicely when you pull it out of the live bait whether it be the shad the bonefish the springer whatever you're using as bait it will actually tear out and go straight in but it actually turns so anything that comes close to it it'll actually hook into it. and that's it there now all we're going to do now is add the swivel and that's a number two power swivel it's rated at 133 kilos so you'll never pull that hard on it but a lot of times what happens for instance a blackfin a blackfin will roll itself and flex and that's what actually breaks your traces and this is by far one of the strongest ways of actually doing it to make a trace okay basically we've plaited the wire now i'm going to add the number two power swivel let's take another size two out to do the knot, again, it's very simple. All we're gonna do is stick all three strands of wire through. And like I say, give yourself a bit to play with. The easiest way of doing this, and because it's very, very small and hard to hold, is use a pair of pliers. I would suggest that you wear a pair of glasses, um, just purely because when you're twisting wire, the wire can shoot around and hit you in the eye and that thing, you don't wanna lose an eye. Um, yeah, guys, safety first. Okay, pair of pliers. Grab the eye of the swivel, but give yourself, and I don't know if you can see there, there's quite a bit of space between the actual swivel and where the swivel goes in, the shaft over there. So what we do is we grab it like so, and hold it as tight as you can. Take the wire and wrap it around as you can see, we're going all three strands around. 
one and a half times. So basically where you've gone in is where you're going to come out. So we do that. I've gone in there, so I'm going to come out there. Okay, so I'm going to go through the eye of the swivel again, coming out the, the opposite side now. And you pull it as hard as you can until you can't pull anymore, and then pinch it with your fingers, and then pull each strand up. One, two, three, and you'll see automatically they go and seat at a different angle. Turn it around, and take the tag end and push it this side of it. So we go around that side, like that, and again, I'm just going to use my pliers, because it's easier to work with. To hold the swivel and we're going to wrap all three strands around so try and make sure that the strands lay next to one another and here we go 90 degrees all the way along one two three four five six times okay and then I'm going to take one strand and break it off so easiest way is to take the top one and 90 degrees so we take it like that at 90 degrees and you go anti-clockwise there we go and you'll see it breaks off cleanly and again we're just going to go around again one two three Four, five, six times. I'm going to break one off again. 90 degrees. And it's nice and clean again, as you can see. And just go around six times with the last strand that we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look, you can go more if you want, it's up to you. And we go 90 degrees. And off. And that's basically the finished knot. All the pressure is actually around the eye of the swivel. And like I did in the beginning, which was the same knot that you saw, is around the eye of the actual hook. So all the pressure is basically around that area. When you pull this tight, um, and the fish flexes and that, all it does is just take up a bit of the slack in the actual wire that you might have. And that's basically your knot. Your leader, of course, being 1 mil, 1.2, 1.5, it's up to you how thick you want your, your leader line to be. We'll attach to that and then go onto your braid or your trace. But this trace is a little bit longer than what I normally make it. So it's about two and a half meters in length, ready to fish. As you can see, it's as simple as that. I'm just going to show you a little trick when it comes to this wire. If you take this wire apart, and it just makes for faster deployment of a trace, basically, because when you hook your, your live bait that you're using, you don't have a lot of time to take your trace apart, put it on, and put the live bait out. You've got to be very fast at it, if not having the rod already ready and rigged for it. But half the time you don't know what size swim bait you're going to get. So to do that, if you do it the way that I've just done it, when it comes loose, you, you'll find that it all starts tangling up and getting a bit messy. A very simple way, especially when it comes to the longer, bigger traces, is to go one that way, and then what you do is you actually twist it inwards. You see like that? Inwards, pull it to the right size. One normal, one twisted inwards. Okay, one normal, one twisted inwards. Okay, well, that's too late. What it does, obviously, once you've rolled it up, is if I just let go, it doesn't tangle up. Okay, so you can take your trace, you just throw it, and the whole thing undoes itself. If you did it the other way, where we're going all nice and neatly like this, because the wires get trapped behind one another when you're actually winding it up, and you do that, when you actually release the whole thing, it all gets knotted. Okay, so just a little trick. Again, 
to do it this way. One that way, one inwards. Okay. One that way, one inwards. And you can do it with CUDA traces, you can do it with any wire trace you want. Uh, one inwards, one out. Okay. So if I let go, it'll be perfectly straight, it won't have a, a kink to it. Another good thing when you do it, is to keep it in that trace that you actually have done it with. So if that was a number 8 wire, I put that back in there. First of all, I know exactly which wire it is. So I know that that's all number 8 wires. And the packaging, once all the air is out, is now also airtight. So no salt water or moisture can actually get into this trace. You can put a little bit of talcum powder, um, those little salt crystals in there, rice if you want. But the easiest way is just to make sure that when you put it in there you don't puncture the actual plastic and this will last for years and years and years. It goes in your bag, when you need it, it's available. Simple as that guys. Nice way of keeping your traces and looking after them. You know exactly which wire was used. So all my small light traces are all number 8 wire, all my heavy traces are normally number 12 or 15 wire. Very easy and they all fit back in the same packaging that they originally came in. Enjoy guys, tight lines.